Hello and a very warm welcome and let's start with some breaking news. The UN Human Rights Office has issued a damning statement describing the war in Ukraine as a horror story of violations against civilians in which respect for international law has been tossed aside. The UN monitoring mission in Ukraine has documented the unlawful killing of 50 civilians in Butcher, northwest of Kyiv, a town shattered in the fight for control of Ukraine's capital. The UN said such killings amount to war crimes, and this comes as Ukrainian officials accuse Russian forces of burying the bodies of hundreds of civilians in mass graves outside the besieged city of Mariupol. Now, this is a picture taken by the U.S. satellite company Maxar on the 19th of March. It shows a, a cemetery in the village of Manhush, just outside Mariupol. Images taken two weeks later on the 3rd of April appear to show freshly dug trenches in Manhush. Now, the mayor of Mariupol says the photos show Russia was trying to conceal the number of people it had killed. Well, I'm joined now by Anna Foster, our correspondent in Kyiv. Anna, this looks like powerful evidence presented by the UN today. That's right. They say that they've documented the killings of 50 civilians in Bucha. I should just say, by the way, if you can hear the sound of sirens in the background here in Kyiv, that is still a, a regular feature of life here in Ukraine at the moment. So 50 civilians, the UN say, they have documented their killings and they express in their report a litany of indiscriminate killings, sexual violence and torture. It's worth saying as well in Bucha, 50 deaths are a small number, it would seem, of the losses in that town. Uh, I have been there on, on various occasions now and there is that mass grave next to the, the beautiful St Andrew's Church in the middle of the town of Bucha and estimates were that there were three to four hundred people buried in that mass grave alone. Uh, we've seen, of course, the pictures of bodies on the streets, bodies which appeared to have been shot in the back, people with hands bound behind their backs. Uh, the UN say that this is clear evidence of war crimes. I spoke actually to the chief prosecutor at the International Criminal Court here in Kyiv the week before last. He said that they were gathering all of this evidence, uh, that it was important for the legal process to take its course, to try and produce some sort of meaningful result. But certainly from the UN Human Rights Office today, they say that not just in Bucha, in towns around Kyiv and across the country, now they now have this clear evidence of war crimes having been committed by Russian forces. Anna, as ever, I'm mindful of those sirens behind you. And of course, it goes without saying, do leave if you feel you need to. But if you're OK to keep talking, just tell me what you're hearing about the Russian offensive in the east. Uh, obviously, their effort to take the whole of the Donbass. How does it appear to be developing right now? Well, it's interesting. We, we hear sort of slightly conflicting reports about how that is going at the moment. Russia says that it's it's taking territory. We heard overnight potentially more than 40 villages, but it's hard to know whether they have been captured and occupied or whether that's just an assessment of where the fighting is actually taking place. So you would describe those perhaps as, as contested areas rather than areas which had been taken. But certainly that whole front line, nearly 500 kilometres long, stretching from Kharkiv up in the northeast, down through the Donbass, through uh, Luhansk and Donetsk, down towards Mariupol, is really where the focus of this battle is now. We know that Ukraine have been donated fresh weapons, including that announcement from the US yesterday of what was due to be coming in. President Zelensky has made the point repeatedly that while he is very grateful for those weapons donations, time is of the essence. They need to be brought here and they need to be moved towards the east, where the fighting is ongoing. We hear reports of near constant shelling in those areas and Ukraine say if they're going to push back if they're going to hold off the Russian advance they need those heavy and sophisticated weapons and they need them at the front line as soon as they can manage